Run my wing parallel to the runway. Oh, lovely, we've got another tailwind. Ah. My name is Tim Palmer, I fly a Jodel DR1050 out of this farm strip in East Anglia. And it's really a matter of, on this flight, I don't know whether you saw the video when I was talking about doing the upgrade. Oh yes, I did this. watch that. Yeah. So on that basis, I just want to make sure that okay. things are working the way they should do. I did check again, it is saying it's well, 2.06, so that's... Okay, are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm in, strapped in, I'm ready to go. Okay, let's go. You know the same, you know the clump of trees that we're talking about in the distance? Yeah, I, I have to admit, the other day when I took off, I did use them. Yeah. At the moment, we're aiming straight for them. Yeah. Which means when it actually has an interesting little sort of bumpy, bumpy bits. Yeah. But if you look straight down, yeah. you'll see there's the runway. Yeah. So that holds the line in place. Uh, it's not too bad, seven, eight hundred feet a minute. I'm well, just having a quick look around over here to my right, the weather's over there. Yep. Um, over there in the distance it doesn't look too good. No, well, we knew that we were going to be fighting a forecast which says the rain is going to be here lunchtime. Yeah. And unfortunately, by the sound of it, once the rain cuts in at lunchtime, we've then got rest of the weekend, haven't we? Brilliant. So what, what, what it's saying? That's a shame, really, because I feel for the guys up at Ruffham today, because uh, they've got uh, their hangar dance tonight. Oh, right. And they're also doing a spot landing competition. Okay. Well, is that within the club? Yeah. Well, yeah. but he can enter, I think. Um, unfortunately, I can't be with them today, because I've got a prior engagement. Okay. Which was booked weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> Always the way. Yeah. Well, you do your best to support clubs and things, which is why, you know, I always try and do the the local bits and pieces yeah. for the Suffolk strut. Yep. We had that trip to Monaden in the rain that was very nice. I mean, I, w I was, and as I said on video, I was really surprised at how many people managed to get through in the rain. Yeah. Uh, but I think a lot of that is the fact that we haven't really had much of an opportunity to go anywhere no. for a long time now. No. What I am going to do here now is... Helicopter over there. Uh, it looks like it. Oh, is that a plane? Oh, I haven't got it actually at the moment. Uh, two o'clock. All oh, right, yeah, got it. I was looking lower down. Yeah. It's not come up on pilot aware. Um, I, the reason I'm doing it this way is the fact that I wanted to come and have a look um, and film. Matt was telling me about the fact that by the new rugby club here, right. oh, yeah. they've actually put um, a major cycling track oh, because right. cycling is now becoming a, a, a more supported sport. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the underwing camera and take that for a walk because oh, yeah. you can see there's an oval yeah. by that tree. Yeah. And there's actually somebody on it now. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's good, really, because that's a sport that a lot of people can get into because it's not ridiculously expensive like other sports. Yeah, and I think there's another part of it here, around the outside of, of that place. Yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah. But all the time that we have been flying, I have been looking very closely at the EFIS to see how that has been working. The only thing I thought I had done to it was I thought I'd asked it to do a wind arrow, but maybe that is something to do with the fact that 
um, I haven't got the equipment set up to to use it, so oh, I yeah. I'd need to have a little little play around on that. But yeah, if I sort of circle back here. So I was just looking on this here to see if there's any aeroplanes in here. But there is one flying over Sudbury at the moment. Yeah. As I say, it's weird that I haven't got anything coming on there. Would you like to take control just for a second or two? Yeah, I've got it. I have control. Yeah. In as much as that is definitely on, because if not, we wouldn't be operating from it. Yeah. Um, I hasten to add, at this point, I have flown Rob a couple of times. He's featured in a couple of videos, one of which I think was I gave Rob a, a flying classroom tour of, uh, of the store and everything. I can put a link to that up now, uh, there, I suppose. Uh, it depends. It depends which camera I'm going to use before the link. Um, but since then, Rob has completed his PPL, so you are now a fully fledged l pilot in your own right. And as your wife says, you know, or likes to say, she's now married to a pilot. So, very nice. Yeah. Uh, what we'll do is we'll push on towards the weather. And I'm going to just reach out the back here, and I'm going to just film a little bit of the EFIS, if you don't mind. Okay. I wouldn't do it quite so much if I didn't have you flying. Primarily, our job is to look out of the window. I don't care what anybody says. So... Yeah, we don't need to panic too much because the fuel gauge is, is registering only a quarter. We know that doesn't work very well. I've got 90 degrees for oil temperature and I've got an oil pressure of about 35, 36. We're doing 80 knots, well, 85 knots. Ever so slightly climbing, Rob, so you can have a little push down with that. The trimmer is over here oh, if right. you want to reach across in front of it. So there's the altimeter. I'll come back to the EFIS in a minute. Transponder, radio. I've just got a, a turn and slip ball or a, a ball there just as another visual because although on the EFIS you've got a little tiny ball at the bottom of the display, it's not always that easy to see from your side. So here we are, we've got carb temperature. The one thing about this camera I don't like very much, and it's me setting it up, is the fact that it does tend to go off. So, I know I'm filming it, but I can't see what I'm filming, so I'm going to have to turn it, finish that one, and start again. So, there we are. We've got carb temperature, and we've got EGT, and cylinder head temperature. We've got a defunct instrument there, RPM, and yeah, a vacuum gauge that has never worked. It was it used to be connected to the um, to the Venturi, but of course the Venturi has never worked particularly well. Um, so that's now been replaced by the EFIS, and I suppose that's a good link. So looking at the EFIS, what I can do is I can change the screen. That will tell me about uh, the satellite strengths and how that's being fed. It does do an engine management system, but of course we're not set up for that. Now you have got there standard circular gauges with engine management down the side. The same sort of thing, but this time you've actually got a GPS readout as well, and I'll do more of that in a little while. Oops, sorry. And then that gives you the standard display plus the GPS, and you could do the standard display plus engine management, but that's the one I tend to keep it on. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for a while and come back to it in a minute. Now I think that's basically just saying they glide from there. Oh, that's not an actual... No, that, okay. Yeah, that's that's not actually anything saying that it is happening. No. I was going to say, because that's worming from over there, isn't it? Yeah. So, yes, as you say, 
that is Wormingford over there and it is a little bit confusing because you have got a glider on the display but actually it just says that they're gliding from there right again okay, okay. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, that's better. Oh. I must have knocked it with my knee. Yeah. It's a bit disappointing. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of power off. Twenty three is usually is usually enough. Right. I was gonna say she wants to climb, doesn't she? Yeah, so I think that weather over there is So down. yeah, how do you how do you find flying this by comparison to you spent most of your time on a 150, haven't you? Or yeah, and a PA28. Now. Okay. So which do you prefer? The PA28. Okay. If you give me a left-hander, a left-handed turn, go swing us round and give us 180 degrees. And then I'll do that. And then what I will do scroll through again. I'll scroll down here. OK, head back to Nayland, so that puts us now, go right hand down, keep coming right hand down because you need to come back over there to Miss Wormingford. I thought we had Nayland in here. Maybe I need to reboot that one in. I don't really want to put Wormingford in because I don't want to fly there. Uh, but if I was, there, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But if I was wanting to do that, yeah. I then scroll through here, and that would gives us the standard display plus the fact that we've got information with regards to Wormingford. But as oh, I well. say, I should have Nayland in there, but it's not. So I'll have to do a little bit of homework on that one. Yeah. But generally speaking. Um, I'm quite happy with the fact that that all works. You see, the other thing, you can set the bugs because you've got, that's the altimeter ribbon there, yep. and that's the VSI ribbon. So there we are, we're not climbing or descending because that purple, oh, we've got, we've got greater descent now because that purple has grown. Right. If there's nothing on there, then basically, we're flying straight and level. Yeah. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah, yeah, and if you climb, if you climb, you'll see that that grows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And likewise, if you descend, you'll see that it drops down below. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. Um, so you've got that there, and you've also got, if you look at the ribbon on this side, that the ribbon colours match the colours of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the um, airspeed indicator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, all in all, that's working quite well. What I might do is I might give you the camera to play with if you'd like to. Although probably you'll be just as happy to sit and watch. <laughs> right, you have control? I have control. All right. Okay. So shall I turn this one off? Although I'm going to take one of my own films if you don't mind. Yeah, of course not. Yeah, whatever. Put that back on the back seat. Oh, there's an alien there. Have you got it? Yeah, there, yeah. Standard pattern that I use, I think majority of us use, is the fact that we come to the north of the village. Yeah trying to give it as much of a, a wide berth as possible yep. because the aim of the exercise is the fact that we try to 
reduce the hassle for the neighbours. And we do that wherever we go. You know, yeah. where one thing is it's crucial to to have the PPR, especially on farm strips like this where yeah. we've got restricted movements and the like. Yeah. But it's also there you can get a briefing. You know, you've got to avoid this, you've got to be aware of this or whatever, whatever. Um, but on as far as we're concerned here, we come round if I'm coming from the east, I always look for Stoke by Nayland Church. Yep. Um, and on the underwing camera, Stoke by Nayland Church should be there now. Although I have noticed sometimes when I'm looking at it and editing, it actually happens a long time after because it depends on how the, the camera is. Yeah. And then, clear of the village. Oh, suddenly, <laughs> it looks very grey, doesn't it? It does. So, I talk about those two reservoirs, and I'm sorry if I'm boring anybody who's watching this one, but I talk about those two reservoirs as a good marker. Yep. All right? I'm not going to use them this time. All right? You know them. You know the strip. So what I do is I come over the top. By coming over the top, you can have a look down and see what the windsock is doing. And just in case you or any of the others are flying your models, it gives you a chance to do something about it. Is there somebody down there now on the on the runway? Or was no. no. What no. you've got is you've got some trees. Oh, you've got a few like trees yeah. that look as if they're you know people and what have you. Yeah, I can't see now because I'm yeah. right over the top. Uh, Nayland traffic over for Yankee Echo Hotel is in the overhead. Nayland traffic. Okay, I'm going to come your way, so you can have a, a look and see what I was saying. Oh, fancy new house underneath the wingtip there. Oh, yes. Yeah. So those trees down the side of the runway do actually make it look like there's people. Yeah. And I'll tell you for why, because when I went flew over here last weekend with Rose, she said to me, whoa, it looks like there's some people on the runway. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there is, but, uh, and sure enough, there was nobody here. They are gliding over there at Wormingford. I won't fly this as a wide, enormous one. Run my wing parallel to the runway. Oh, lovely, we've got another tailwind. Ah. So this time I'm over the campsite, but well inside those two lakes. Yeah. Your harness okay, your hatch okay? I'm not, yeah, I'm fine. All right, brake is down. Well, brake is, I say down, it's forward, so brake is off. Not going to do anything with the air brake for the moment. Okay, and just give it a burst of carb air spluttering a little bit which is a bit weird okay and I'm gonna fly a base inside of where I normally do can you see those two lakes in the water oh, right. okay. uh, in the water in the trees two lakes in the water stupid what have I been drinking nothing have a pint of what he's been on yeah yeah contact one again Oh yes, it is there, look. Yeah. We have got it. Okay. But it didn't get a verbal warning, no? Why our air brake comes down, change the trim. Would you look at that? Someone's flying your aeroplane. <laughs> there it is. It's there, yeah. yeah. It's there. Just to confirm that we are in the air. <laughs> Clear on final. Nothing else about there. And Nayland traffic of Alpha Yankee Echo Hotel is final Nayland traffic. The other day when I flew this in with Matt, I was surprised, but not at all shocked, that uh, his approach was equally high, if not even higher than mine. All right. Although I was talking to John yesterday about the fact that, and I'll... I'll exaggerate it here, but come in at an angle. Oh, over that large tree. 
well, to have missed the large tree, but also to come in over the lower trees. Yep. So, can do that. And then here. I think the bump is making that look worse than uh, than the actual landing. <laughs> I think the bumps on the runway. Yeah, they don't help, do they? And when you get down on the ground and you look over there, you can see where it's looking pretty horrible. Yeah, I think we've got back at the right time, actually. Yeah. Well, that was an enjoyable flight anyway. Well, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and I hope those people viewing um, enjoyed it. I really do appreciate the comments. As I say, likes are good. So if you if you did enjoy it, uh, tick that like. But I really do like the feedback from people. So, you know, if you have watched it and you can leave me a comment, leave me a comment. It's really nice to know where people are in the world because, you know, I'm occasionally getting emails and things only to show that the internet has made the world a really small place because it's people all over the place and I do appreciate every single one of you that watch my my videos. Um, hopefully I don't bore you, but <laughs> if I haven't bored you, to, bored you too much with this one, then please join me again next week. And if you haven't subscribed, then by all means, please subscribe. Um, there isn't a point in putting the notification bell on because I have been as regular as clockwork for the last 322 videos, 7.30, Friday morning, local to the UK. Thank you very much.